Hey guys, it's Boomer here sitting on the old Silver Wing. Nice chilly morning this morning. Uh, you know, riding last week, uh, twice in the same afternoon, I had cars uh, almost hit me. Well, one almost hit me, one almost pulled out in front of me. And that's something that, as riders, you have to anticipate, you have to expect. It, it happens. Um, you know, I uh, had one guy uh, was merging off of the expressway and I was in the right hand lane and right after the uh, exit ramp is a right hand turn and I had my signal on and was going to the uh, right hand turn lane and he was just pulling out onto the road and came very close right to the side of my bike. Uh, so knowing that this stuff happens uh, it's incumbent upon riders to do things to number one see and number two be seen those are critical uh, I mean there are a lot of things that you can do to make riding a lot safer but uh, one would be gear I'm an at-gat guy uh, pretty much I don't always wear the pants uh, the over pants with the padding and stuff and I know that uh, jeans offer virtually no protection whatsoever, uh, Wranglers, Levi's, whatever. But I'll always have the jacket on, uh, the helmet, the gloves, the boots, uh, only because it's, it's one of those things where you just never, ever know. You don't. You can't. You never know when something is going to happen. I've said before that nobody is sitting in prison thinking they were going to get caught. And if people would just anticipate that they, well, the old expression, you know, there are two kinds of riders, those that have been down and those that will go down. Um, I'm sure there are riders that have not gone down in the same way that there are riders that have been down multiple times. So there are things that can be done to make riding a whole lot safer. You know, the checking your bike, the the T-clocks, which I'll probably go over in another video. Learn that in the MSF course. Uh, at GAT, all the gear all the time. Uh, speeding, you know, it's fun to go fast on a bike, but don't. Um, there are times and places for that. Uh, the track, uh, if you want to go fast and it's safe and there's not traffic going to pull out in front of you. Uh, things that I'll talk about in later videos like lane positioning. Now for, for a motorcyclist, the lane is divided into three parts, left, center, and right. Where do you want to be in the lane when you're riding? And different circumstances will dictate where you are in the lane. Typically, I'm going to be on the left side. Why? Uh, because the two most common accidents on motorcycles are motorcycle alone and motorcycle and another vehicle. Now, if it's motorcycle alone, just the rider and the bike, and there's an accident, Almost all the time it's in a curve because the biker has gone too fast or too hot into the turn or the curve. You know, the slow look, press and roll thing they teach you, and then you learn trail braking and all that. But if another vehicle is involved, almost always it's because that vehicle has turned in front of the motorcyclist. So that's why I stay in the left portion of the lane if I'm following other vehicles. Um, I want to give enough distance behind the vehicle in front of me, but I also want to be on the left side so that any vehicle that would be turning left that would take that vehicle in front of me has ample opportunity to see me. That's the be seen part. Also, the jacket. I wear the high-vis yellow. Um, I have a silver helmet, uh, but a white helmet is a great choice. You want to be seen lighting on your bike. Um, I, the bike I'm on right now is a 1982 Silverwing. It has one headlight initially. 
from the manufacturer. But what I did is I have some uh, Cree LED lights that I've mounted. So now I have additional lighting on the front and I put an LED strip on the back that when I hit the brake uh, along with one of those uh, flashing modules that it will flash several times when I hit the brake uh, so that I can be seen. Now lane positioning is both to see and to be seen. So if I'm in the left hand portion of the lane and there's a car that's that's coming the opposite direction who, who wants to turn left then that car I want to give that car plenty of opportunity to be able to see me on my bike the lighting the high vis colors uh, my lane positioning now if I'm in the right hand portion of the lane then I'm going to be somewhat obscured by the car or the vehicle that is in front of me especially if I'm not at a proper distance from that vehicle uh, now if Again, part of the C is you want to be able to see what is going on in front of you. And following too closely behind the vehicle in front of you doesn't give you that great of an opportunity to see what's happening up in front of that vehicle. If there is a car coming from a side street, which would be to my right as I'm riding, then I will move over to the right side of the lane and give that vehicle, because I've seen him, if I'm aware and I'm looking, I've seen that vehicle, and I want to give that vehicle every opportunity to see my bike, see me, so that he doesn't pull out in front of me. So it's that old lane positioning thing. And the other thing is, you never want to follow behind another vehicle right directly behind that vehicle. And the reason is that if there's something in the road, what is that vehicle going to do? it's going to straddle it to go over it and whatever's in the road if it's a big old pothole a piece of wood whatever it may be is going to come out right in the middle of that vehicle and where are you right in the middle but if you follow the tires of the vehicle in front of you then you have a much better chance uh, an opportunity to avoid obstacles and, and items in the road and uh, you know again hopefully the distance you're following behind that vehicle is going to allow you to see as well um, anything that's in the road uh, which is extremely important you know if you uh, hit something in a car you get ba -bump. you know if you hit something on a bike you might get a slide so you want to be able to see see and be seen are so critical when you're riding a motorcycle uh, proper lane positioning proper distance behind the vehicle in front of you um, and, you know, thinking about lane positioning, especially if it starts to rain a little bit uh, for the first 10, 15 minutes, uh, the center of the road is going to be the most slick because that's where cars drop the oil, the antifreeze, whatever the car may be leaking. And you add water to that. I mean, it's slick enough to begin with, but you add some water to that, the center is going to be slick. So stay to the left stay to the right following the tire tracks but lane positioning is probably the big topic of this video you've got to position your bike so that you can see see down the road and be seen by other vehicles uh, lane positioning lighting gear it's all critical to being seen on a bike now is that going to guarantee that nothing is going to happen absolutely not I was on my old Nighthawk and I was doing 45 or so and a lady a 77 year old lady completely blew a stop sign and I don't know even the police officer said to avoid the impact was an amazing piece of riding uh, but I didn't hit her and uh, which is you know just another thought which is why you have to practice your emergency braking your emergency techniques uh, so that you become instinct it's instinct you don't have to think about it and then ride uh, as one other youtuber says like you'll never need them so you practice like you your life depends on it but then ride like you'll never need it um, and hopefully that works out but at any rate she blew the stop sign right in front of me. I'm going like, now I saw her. And when you see a car, you, you, there are things you can do. 
uh, I roll off of the throttle and slow down a bit because I saw this car approaching and, and, in, and in my mind I'm thinking okay she could very well not see me and pull out and well that's exactly what happened whether she didn't see me or she didn't look doesn't matter she pulled out and I swerved and you never swerve and brake at the same time but I swerved and then brake but the lean angle was so great that I actually low sided slid down the road now the bike wasn't too bad it was repairable I just had some scrapes but the one thing I wanted to emphasize is again at get because I I was on my way to a bike show it's a 1982 Honda Nighthawk pristine condition no way could have I have anticipated that she was going to pull out in front of me no way in the world it happened I had on my helmet and I distinctly remember the right side of my head hitting the roadway and the big blue flash and it actually cracked my helmet now imagine if I hadn't had that helmet on you just never know so the big topic today is see and be seen lane positioning distance lighting gear and keeping your eyes on the road in front of you even in front of the vehicle in front of you what's going on in front of that vehicle in front of you you want to be prepared and make your decisions accordingly to what's going on around you with distance and so forth and so on so anyway safe riding and we'll talk again soon